Hola, hola, hola. ¿Cómo están, mis amores? ¿Cómo están haciendo? ¿Qué están haciendo hoy? Este, ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Miércoles? ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Wednesday? Sí, yes, hoy es Wednesday. ¿Cómo están ustedes haciendo? Um, IPGG Squad. Ok. We did it. We're doing it. It keeps getting worse, y'all. When I'm telling you, I've never put out these many videos in one week. I promise you, I have not. Because it keeps getting worse for Didi. It keeps getting worse for Didi. He ain't gonna make it. He better not make it. After all this, you know what's gonna happen? My my um thought. What I predict, because my predictions are usually spot on. And y'all will see in the videos that we're about to watch in two seconds. Like everything that I said in my previous videos on this case, on the Cassie and PDD case, those are the truths that are now coming out. Those are the truths that are now coming out. So you know, it, it, it's getting worse, y'all. There's more stuff that has now come out on Didi. And by association, more and more people are being dragged into it. Let me tell you something. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that people in politics are involved. I have a feeling there's a lot of people in politics that partake in the rituals that happened in Hollywood, because how else would have Didi gotten away with all of this stuff until now? Because things about him have always circulated around. They've always circulated around. So how else would he have managed to bury all these things? Um, to get away with all of these things for this long. Right? So you can't tell me nothing. I know. I'm using my brain and I know. My heart knows. My brain knows. That politics and politicians are involved. And now that Diddy is is going through all this, you know what they're going to do? They're going to throw him under the bus quick and, a, quick and in a hurry. Because at first, they'll try to protect him because protecting him means protecting themselves, right? So they'll try to end stories quickly, like the 24-hour settlement. You think Diddy came up with that himself? I don't think so. I think the higher-ups that are above even Diddy the ones that oversee him gave him a phone call and said, you better get it together or you're about to be on your own. So they protect him because initially it's the easiest and safest path. But now that all of this is coming, actually, he got sued again, y'all. So we'll go through that, too. Um, now that all of this is coming to the light, they out. He, Didi's about to be on his own. They're actually going to probably contribute to his demise because what they will end up doing is they will end up, you know, sending anonymous proofs to put everything on Didi. So the focus still stays off of them. So that they, they can save themselves by sacrificing him, essentially. Watch. Mark my words. Mark my words, because it's already happening. So let's take a look here. Let's get this this started because it ain't over every single day. It's, he's done for. I don't even know, you know, he is, he's done. <laughs> he's done, okay? He's done. He's done, y'all. I should have brought me a drink or something. You know, I might I might have to go get me a drink for this one. I might. I really might. Okay. Didn't we say it was over for Sean Diddy Combs? And didn't we say that the whole institution was rotten and would have to fall? Well, get this. The former bad boy president and the label are sued for electoral, for 
alleged, right? S.A. Student assault and negligence. Y'all, let's get into this. An ex-assistant to Harv Pierre claims that, that he used his position of authority to, uh, as her boss, to groom, exploit, and S.A. her. Y'all, bad boy, when Tupac said F bad boy is a staff, a record label, and an MF it, please, this is the ghost of Tupac. He told us less than a week after Diddy was accused. This is the ghost of a few people that he took out thinking that he, he was winning. He thought he was winning, you know, offing all these people, killing all these people, unaliving all these people, oops, unaliving all these people thinking he was winning, feeding his own ego, thinking he's alpha, he, he ain't nothing. He's nothing. Y'all, let's keep going. Of grape and blank, traffic blank, blank to Cassie, a longtime executive at his company, Bad Boy Entertainment, is being sued for allegedly grooming and SA his assistant. Harvey Pierre, and I actually remember Harvey Pierre, the former president of Bad Boy, who met Diddy when they were students together at Howard University, is accused, Howard University needs to take their degrees away, I'm just saying, is accused of preying on the jo Jane Doe plaintiff on multiple occasions in New York City and other locations throughout the country. Ooh, I know that's right. This was literally, I, I believe the complaint was filed in the Southern District of, I'm sorry, no, not the Southern District, in the New York County Supreme Court. So they're keeping it state, local. Pierre used his position of authority as, his, as her boss to groom, exploit, and SA her. Pierre engaged in a year-long pattern of grooming plaintiff, leading to the SA of plaintiff and the, um, the harassment also. The anonymous assistant who hasn't given her name, y'all, if anybody was hurt by them, y'all need to come out now. Everyone. 100%. Now is the time. Because they can't pay everybody off. They cannot do it. So everyone that was hurt by these animals need to come out now because this is the perfect time to take them all down. So Didi's record label, whatever his business is, is getting sued by this assistant because birds of a feather flock together. And guess what? All of them males. All of them males. Another male. Exploiting and being accused of having essayed and exploited yet another woman. What is it going to take, ladies? What is it going to take for you to leave them alone? Even on this level of finances we see that it's even worse you know why it's worse when it comes to males because it's in their nature to be despicable yet another male being accused and being sued and the company being sued too now is the time and i that's why i don't sleep i don't really do anything else i sit here and i got my eye out for as soon as the stories break out on this, I'm making the video because I want to be a part of that push. One, you better get it while you live it. The anonymous assistant alleges Pierre sexually assaulted her on multiple occasions from 2016 to 2017. And as a result, she suffered, wow, physical, emotional, and psychological inju injuries along with pain and suffering. The woman is asking for damages that will fully and fairly compensate her. Now, Pierre hasn't said anything. I want to say what, let's read into this because I swear to God, if he made her wear white nail polish. Oh, I, I would say one thing. I'm beginning to believe Kanye when he said that Diddy is feds. Ain't no way in the world all this mess goes down and nothing. Mm -hmm. The lawsuit also names... I'm telling you, it goes all the way up to the politics and the feds. It has to. It has to. Because there have been stories that have broken out about Didi, never on this scale, though, because little did he know 
that Cassie would be the one to do it. But it goes all the way up. Politicians, police, feds, they're all in there. That's what I think. That's what it looks like to me. Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, and Combs Enterprises as co-defendants accusing the companies of negligence and gender vi Ooh, gender violence. Defendants knew or should have known that Pierre was unfit to be in the position of authority. Gender violence. Y'all, I made a video not even just a few days ago, like two days ago, maybe even yesterday. No, it wasn't yesterday. It was like two days ago, I think. I will link it to this video. But I made a video on gender-based violence against women. And I showed the research paper and the research article and the proof that was directly published and has information directly published from the United Nations. There's about around 195 to 198 nations in the United Nations. And it was published, the information was published directly from the United Nations as a worldwide crisis. Worldwide crisis. If you haven't watched that video, you need to watch that video after you watch this one. Gender-based violence against women, specifically, from men to women, is and has been a worldwide crisis. They have deemed it a worldwide crisis, and now they're trying to pour money into it. I think it's too late. Women have caught on. Women are like, what, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. I ain't having no kids. Are you nuts? With a beta male? There's nothing but beta males here. It ain't happening. Before he essayed the plaintiff, it claims the companies failed to properly supervise Pierre, especially considering his access to individuals like the plaintiff. A bad boy spokesperson has come out and said that we have recently become aware of the lawsuit filed in New York by a former employee. The allegations are are from many, many years ago that were never brought to the attention of the company. And they brought to your attention now if you don't open up those security footage and see what's going on. Neither the plaintiff nor the executive are current employees of the company. And it still doesn't mean you're not liable. We're now investigating the allegations and our top priority is the safety and well-being of our employees. But you just said that they're not. You know what? Bat Boy is playing this all wrong. They ain't going to last. Bat Boy is not. They are going to. They're not going to last because they're fiddling, fumbling. They don't know what to do. <laughs> they didn't see it coming. They don't know what to do. That is one of the biggest um, weaknesses that Neanderthals, Neanderthals and delusional males have. They never think that they will be caught. So they don't spend any time preparing. You see how he's been unaliving people left, right, center. Didi, the owner of this BS, whatever this BS company is. And apparently Tupac said it. And the more cases that have come out that are like this, because in the past couple of years, we've been hearing nothing but crazy truths when it comes to celebrities. We don't even need the term anymore at this point. It's so gross what these people are and what they do. It's like, ooh. Tupac was speaking out and he was like, I ain't doing none of that. And they unalived him because he was like, what is this? And he was speaking out on a lot of things. going to be dismantled systematically for this to happen. Now, look at this. They said Pierre started Bad Boy in 1992, according to his LinkedIn profile, working his way up from intern and Diddy's assistant. What kind of name is Pierre? What kind of name is Pierre? Wasn't that like, do y'all remember that cartoon 
with the skunk. I can't remember what that cartoon was called. It has it had like a, a skunk in it. And I think his name was Pierre, wasn't it? Like it makes I guess from that perspective it makes sense because the the skunk's name was Pierre. And if I remember correctly, the skunk was a super creep. Like I think he would like flirt it was super creepy. So, you know, just saying. It, but was he wearing white nail polish? Uh to the director level position. To the director level position. Uh, before leaving the company in 1995, Pierre eventually returned to become its president until December 2017. He now calls himself a. Yeah, Pierre Le Pew. Pierre Le Pew. And he was super creepy, super cringe. This cartoon promoting. You know, behavior that engages in disrespecting personal boundaries like he would always kiss this cat i don't know what this cat is from the warmer looney tunes looney tunes is a big problem disney is a big problem because if you think about this cartoon now as an adult what was he doing he was always like touching that cat and hugging the cat and kissing the cat and the cat never wanted that the cat was always struggling to not be touched or harassed by it. Pepe Le Pew. Close enough. Anyways, y'all, that was just a, that just made me. Let's see. Commercial owner of the company that helped launch the careers of Notorious Big, Craig Mack, Mace, and Faith Evans. Wow. So get this. If you've experienced anything, you need to know this. The suit was filed as a consequence to the Adult Survivors Act, which allowed a one-year window for those in New York to bring civil lawsuits uh, alleging SA even if the statute of limitations had passed. It's set to expire on Friday, November 24th of 2023. According to the Associated Press, the legislation led to more than 2,500 la lawsuits, with many, including Cassie's suit against Diddy and uh, the J. Jones lawsuit against Russell Brand being filed in the final days leading up to the deadline. So y'all got how many days? You better get into it. Cassie, as you know, settled her stuff out really, really well. But the thing is with this whole thing with Diddy, and I firmly believe this, I do not believe that Diddy was just out there wilding out acting crazy and everybody else was in church. I believe that Diddy made people participate I believe he hired people that were on the same time with him. And I do believe that as time goes on and on, we're going to find more and more and more out. I think. Yeah, there's no other way this could have happened. Part of power is you have to get other people involved. You can't have power on this scale without other influential figures backing you as well with their power. So no, he wasn't acting alone. Even in the in the in the uh information that came out that he would tape her, he would tape Cassie and there would be other people watching the live and it was live. And we were talking about it in my last video. Who do we, who was watching those lives? We probably had politicians. We probably had people from the police. We probably had all type of people watching those lives. And not just regular politicians, not just regular police. We're talking about people that are like in influential positions within those realms. There's no other way it is otherwise it is impossible to get away with the stuff that this animal has gotten away with for this long but he played himself he thought it was a game he played himself he thought he was god see males walk around thinking they're god guess who is his demise cassie a woman 
a woman whom he perceived as weaker than him, as an object to be used and exploited. This is the male's greatest weakness. Their greatest weakness lies in not realizing and understanding that women are the real leaders. We create, we give birth to you. It cannot and will never be the other way around. It starts with us and it will end with us. The, the one who he felt was the weakest, Cassie, because of how ignorant he is. Any person with a brain would think to them themselves, man, this girl has been around for five years. How does she even survive all these beatings? And, and any person with a brain would start to get nervous. Do you know how strong you have to be to survive these beatings for 10 years, to survive that level of abuse for 10 years? And you didn't even think about it twice because you thought you had all the power. And at the end of the day, we as women will have to take care of that ridiculous notion and mentality of yours. Clean up duty. For idiots trying to destroy planet Earth. That if anybody has a story to say, they should say it. But I'm also thinking I really wanted to say this, that Diddy actually might be feds. If you guys don't know that the page six actually did a write up on Diddy and literally talked about when he assaulted Steve Stout, when nine people got deceased in a stampede for a thing that he was hosting, the way he literally assaulted Justin's UCLA football coach with a kettleball because he was yelling at Justin during football practice. Do you know that for all this, for assaulting somebody with a kettleball, he tried to break that mofo's head open with a kettleball. The, char the prosecutor said that they were dropping him. This is the LAPD prosecutor will that will prosecute you if you steal a pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit. Do they still sell that? If you steal a pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit from the Walgreens, Thrifties, whatever you want to call it, they will literally throw the book at you. He did, they decided not to press charges when he assaulted Steve Stout. They gave him a harassment charge. That is what you get when you catcall somebody from across the street in New York City. They gave him a harassment charge, and then they had the nerve. And I mean the nerve. They had the nerve to give him one day of anger management. Why has Diddy, it's not just the violence and the essay that he allegedly committed towards Cassie and a bunch of other women. It's the way that he got caught with the driving with Justin. Justin switched seats with him. That's what Misa Hill and Brim tried to imply. We don't know if that's what happened. It's when J-Lo and Shine and him all got caught with that hammer in the car. J-Lo got released. Puppy got off. Shine had to take the rap. Diddy has done so many grimy things to so many people over the years. And they have involved law enforcement and still nothing ever happens to that man how is that possible it's beginning to look like black epstein last thing last night we noticed that kim porter's page was down that kim porter's page was wiki's page was down and every time you searched her it would go hey, y'all if you didn't know as soon as he settled with cassie his pr team went to work double time and they started scraping the web off of any and all information related to Kim Porter and anything else that they felt like would um, not be beneficial to a Puff. They scraped everything. And so it was all over the news that even Kim Porter's Wink Wikipedia page was, was scraped, it, taken down. 
So that's what she's referring to. And I haven't even watched this video. I have not watched this video. I saw the title and I said, you see, even the high ranking, there have to be high ranking politicians that we could never even fathom who are partaking in these types of harm to women because there is absolutely no other way that this male would still be walking around free otherwise. There's no way. Go to Diddy's page and they had unlinked her. Do you know now the site's back up after everybody noticed it last night? What is Diddy up to? What is he doing? And why did that page go down at, on the day that he settled with Cassie? You guys, listen. Let me know if you want to go live tonight because we got to talk. About you know what I'm saying? On the day that he settled with her, as soon as he settled with her, they took it down. But what they didn't know, and I don't know why they keep underestimating the people. What they didn't know is what they didn't know is that um, people would catch on to it. I don't know if they just thought, you know whatever uh, like y'all I, I i can't i cannot so they didn't know that people would catch on to it i guess so this is turning out to be puff's worst nightmare because all the people he unalived and thought were gone think again sir reconsider because they are very much still here and your time has come. Your time has come. Now let's take a look at this, y'all. It's just one after the other. So we gotta keep keep this news fluid. Let's take a look at this. Very young. Um, probably too young, a uh, bride. So I had these kids very early. Sean Diddy Combs allegedly threatened to hit Kimora Lee Simmons, who was pregnant at the time. They told me they couldn't go out to Puff, but they could go out to Russell Simmons. Those people knew that Ruckel Simmons was on a chopping block and something was going on. Kimora Lee Simmons has broken her silence on growing allegations about Diddy being involved in trafficking alongside other high-profile industry men. And she allegedly believes her ex-husband, Russell Simmons, is one of them. In 2017, multiple women accused Russell of S.A., with the youngest alleged victim being just 17. And then months later, Russell moved to Indonesia, a country that doesn't have any extradition treaty with the U.S. Now, as you all know by now, Diddy's ex, Cassie, accused Diddy of trafficking, S.A., and D.V. in a bombshell lawsuit, which he then settled in record time, probably to avoid the discovery phase and trial. So after Cassie's story blew up, a lot of people pointed out that it sounded very similar to what Kimora Lee went through with Russell Simmons. See, Russell was 35 when he met Kimora, who was 15 or 16, while Diddy was 37 when he allegedly started grooming 19-year-old Cassie. Kimora also accused Russell... So something needs to be done about the age limit. This, these despicable males going after 15 year old women, going after 19 year old women. I had a despicable, disgusting male comment on one of my videos. I left it there so women, you can see. You can see with your own eyes. There was a disgusting comment there that said, why are we, why did you even bring up age as if that's a problem? This disgusting animal was almost 40 when Cassie was 19. Kamara, uh, Kamara Simmons was 15. And that animalistic male was 35. We have to do something about the minimum age limit. 18 is not it. The minimum age limit when it comes to what would be considered illegally dating, specifically when it comes to what would be considered illegally dating a minor.
And it needs to be increased to, I believe it needs to be increased to at least 27 years old for women. Because that's really when our brains fully develop. And that gives us more time to gain real world experience. If males don't want to go extinct, which I think it's probably too late because so many women are like, oh, no, 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 no. But it would be in their best interest to fix this problem. Then that idiot was commenting on my things, talking about why are you bringing up age? Because they they keep targeting minors, they keep targeting uh, women that are barely out of the age of eighteen. Why do you think they're doing that? Don't ask me why I'm bringing up the age gap. Ask them. But you're you're asking me why I'm bringing up the age gap, but you're not asking them why they keep targeting all of these young, young, incredibly young and inexperienced women, predators. And they don't even see anything wrong with it. Predators, animals, vile, disgusting. Stay away from these males. So earlier this year of mistreating her and their two daughters, and one of the daughters provided receipts to show Russell is a dangerous and violent man. And then when you add all this to the fact that Kimora was a close friend of Diddy's late girlfriend, Kim Porter, it really makes you wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes. So now that Kimora is speaking out on Cassie's lawsuit, will this get the ball rolling to expose all these alleged traffickers in the music industry? And could this also lead to Kim Porter's case being reopened? Let's break it down. Happy may have settled the lawsuit with Cassie, but this is definitely not the end, because Cassie opened a can of worms, and by making her story public, she encouraged other people to speak out against Diddy's alleged crimes. One of these people is Kimora Lee, who just broke her silence on Cassie's lawsuit, and hinted that Diddy is finally getting the karma he deserves. One day after Cassie filed a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging years of DV, SA, and trafficking, Kimora shared a story with the message, as you sow, so shall you reap. Meanwhile, an old interview with Kimora resurfaced where she spoke about how Diddy once threatened to kill her while she was pregnant. Back in 2004, Kimora talked about this incident with the New York Magazine, and interestingly, she mentioned her then-husband, Russell Simmons, suggesting that Diddy copied Russell in everything. The article states, there was a nasty cloudburst when Kimora said something to Combs, and he threatened to hit her. And then Kimora added, and I was pregnant, the moron. The article goes on to say that Diddy got down on his knees in public to apologize, and Kimora said, I appreciate knowing that everything he does is emulating my husband. Now, Diddy and Russell were very close for years, and Russell was a regular at Diddy's infamous parties. Diddy and Russell also reportedly used to vacation together back when Kim Porter was still alive. But what's really disturbing are the similarities between Russell's relationship with Kimora and Diddy with Cassie. Kimora was just 15 or 16 when she met 35-year-old Russell, and they started dating shortly after. Russell later claimed that they didn't begin dating until Kimora turned 18, and back in 2020, he wrote this on Instagram. She was legal at 17, but she turned 18 that May. Her mother and her manager, Bethan Hardison, approved, supported, and rushed us. We really didn't need a push. But as many fans pointed out, nothing Russell says makes him look innocent because a 35-year-old man dating an 18-year-old girl may be legal, but it's still predatory. Anyway, Russell and Kimora got married in... Predatory and disgusting. Predatory and disgusting. And he didn't start when she was 18. He started when she was 15. Leave these animals alone. Ladies, teach the other young ladies, the teenagers. They are the ones that need the most protection because you don't understand. Think back of what you were like when you were 15, when you were 19. When I think back at what I was like, I didn't know jack squat. Well, I was walking around this world thinking that everything was roses and rainbows. 
I didn't really truly understand how dangerous the world is. And they prey on that. Using women. It's like, do it yourself. Leave us out of it. Leave us alone. What is the problem here? You, you're so big and bad. You're so rich. What are you looking for with us? Why drag women into it? It pisses me off beyond belief. This predatory behavior. Oh, she just turned 18, so it's cool. Disgusting. 1998, and they share two daughters, Ming Lee and Aoki Lee. However, Kimura and Russell's marriage was rocky from the start due to Russell's controlling behavior and anger outbursts. In 2008, Kimura filed for divorce, but that's when the real nightmare started and Russell allegedly began harassing and threatening her and their daughters. After she initially tried to keep this away from the public to protect her daughters, Kimura reached a boiling point earlier this year and went on Instagram Live to expose Russell for mistreating them for years. He's even said things to them like, why did you go to college? You shouldn't have gone to college. You wasted that money. You could have saved it. While I'm up here trying to hustle the kids over the finish line, but I think it comes a time when you guys have to ask yourself, why are these women, young women, um, not supportive or not really trying to hear that? Or what have they gone through? What have they seen that they, you know, that has turned them off or that has put a, a bad taste in their mouth? You know, we've seen a lot lately over the years. Kimura revealed that despite having zero involvement in their daughter's lives, Russell continued to post photos of the girls on social media, trying to convince the public he's a good dad. This person has not been to any events, did not come to graduation, you know, no, no he wasn't particularly wanted, but no one stopped you. You know, hasn't sent a flower or a or a gift or a, a, a kind word. By the way, doesn't this remind this is the description of 97 to 98% of males. They are never fully involved in their child's life. They just want to pretend like they are. They never are. They are the most selfish species on planet earth they are the most unneeded species on this earth they have to be then they have the audacity to look at women especially women that don't want children to say oh you're so selfish to call us women selfish or women that don't want to suffer in poverty selfish but they impregnate women at a rate that's as fast as lightning and will leave and abandon those women and children and never be involved in the raising of those children quicker than the rate of light lightning. But we're the selfish ones. When 98 to 97%, 90, 97 to 98% of the time, who stays? The woman. And they can't even do anything by themselves. They always and will always need the woman. That's how we earned our rights. We had to fight and earn our rights. They didn't have to do deck squat. So they've just been deteriorating this whole time. A lack of morals, lack of ethics. They don't even have a brain. Most of them can't read. But you over here taking pictures and, 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 and snaps, acting like your time won't come. I need you to understand that what we're seeing on this higher level when it comes to people with financial wealth is the exact same thing that's happening all across the board. So ladies, reconsider getting stuck with a male. 
just because you the patriarchs patriarchy told you you have to have a child this and that or, you, or you're selfish you don't have that child you're gonna be raising that child by yourself by yourself then you will learn the hard way what the true meaning of selfishness is because he will teach you Mind you of the way Diddy always talks about how much he loved Kim Porter? Whenever someone goes out of their way to shove love and positivity in everyone's face, nine times out of ten, they're covering up something. But it gets worse. Kimora later shared a series of stories explaining why she decided to expose Russell, and she claimed that he threatened to unalive her kids. One of Kimora's daughters, Aoki, later confirmed all this and claimed she had evidence of Russell harassing them. And if he says one thing and disagrees with me, I will post it all because he does it. I have videos of him saying awful things that no one should have to hear about anyone they know, much less their mother. He has called me names. He has called us all house of bitches, all you bitches. He has called us terrible things. All because I wouldn't take his side. Now, another interesting thing Kamora mentioned in her live is that Russell was broke and she supported him for years. I have records and evidence of this where he's told the kids in writing we have it text messages i'm broke i this i that i can't you know go get it from your mom now meanwhile i have been financially carrying this person probably for the last at least 10 years myself and my ex-husband again this is all proven with receipts so if whatever somebody doesn't like what i'm saying you know we could talk about it we can come we can open up our receipts. I, I love it. I love receipts. And this could explain why Russell fled to Bali after multiple women came forward in 2017 accusing him of S.A. He knew he didn't have the money or connections to fight this in court. Just months after S.A. allegations surfaced, Russell sold his properties in the U.S., moved to Bali, and reinvented himself as a yoga teacher. And if you look at his Instagram, he now constantly shares posts about love and spirituality. Again, doesn't this remind you of someone? Love. I changed my name. To Sean Love Combs. I'm serious about love, y'all. I'm all in on love. I decided I'm just going to just be love all the way. Diddy, however, has different kinds of money. And sadly, we've seen time and time again how these ultra rich and powerful people get away with doing the worst types of crimes. By the way, this is males. These, these beta, beta males are literally psychotic. Can you imagine? Fleeing the U.S., fleeing the legal system, fleeing the law to a whole nother country, then you start posting instead of just leaving and leaving the rest of us alone and don't come back here because if you come back here, it's over with for you. You start posting on social media talking about a uh, 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 peace and are you like, what's going on here? Like, is this working? It ain't working, is it? That's why I keep telling you, ladies, these males can't even read. These males can't read. Don't believe anything that ever comes out of their mouth. Nothing that comes out of their mouth is ever the truth. Ever. Ever. You cannot believe them. You cannot trust them. You always have to keep them at arm's length. Don't let them love bomb you. Don't let them rush you don't let them lie to you through words you have to be your own person and leave these males alone keep them at a distance they're nuts you see how stupid he looks in that interview i changed my name to love i'm all in on this love thing y'all like huh Someone that's all in on love doesn't have to sit there talking about it all day, trying to prove it by being over dramatic and publicizing it all over social media. Someone that's serious about that is, is not doing that, is not using his time to do that. You see how that works? Psycho males, psychos. We have yet to see a woman involved in Stupidity such as this one. This is also something that Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, mentioned a few years ago when he said that he tried to pitch a book about Diddy, Russell, and other shady industry men, and he was told they could go after Russell, but not Diddy. Oh, and Gene also mentioned something about Diddy and Jay-Z covering up for Russell. People were disgusted on how 
Jay-Z, Kane, and Puff is coming out for Russell Simmons. They told me they couldn't go out to Puff, but they could go out to Russell Simmons. Those people knew that Russell Simmons was on a chopping block and something was going on. Fans are now urging Kimora to reveal everything she knows about Diddy and Russell, and they're speculating these trafficking allegations go all the way to the top in Hollywood. One fan said, the way it was described in the lawsuit about Diddy filming Cassie on multiple devices, adjusting the candles, and wearing masks while she was essayed, sounds like some called ritual-ish. I think he was filming to show other ritual eats. And another person added, something else will come out about Diddy by March, April 2024. Don't be surprised if Kimora Lee Simmons will speak on something she saw. But let us know if you think Diddy and Russell were covering up for each other. And do you think Kimora knows more about Diddy's alleged crime? Of course Kimora knows more. Of course she knows. We probably can't even fathom what this lady knows. Can't fathom it. We probably can't even fathom what this lady has lived through. Can't fathom it. Of course she knows. Of course. Now they said it here, but if you watched my previous video, I had already said that. I said, this has to be, I mean, cause, cause 50, the, the video on 50 cent commenting on it, when he said, Oh, he w I thought he was just mad because he left because she, Cassie, who was in the uh, video, leveled up because the person Cassie was with was more famous and richer than Didi. So I said, wait a second. So that means this goes all the way even higher than Didi. Probably across industries. And I still don't understand why it is that all of these males are gay. But yet their only way of flexing is through women. Ladies, have you ever asked yourself that? So we are the value. We are what makes you look good. Yet you want to lie and treat us like we're not. But you can't flex with other guys. You have to have a woman in order to flex. This is 2023. If you gay, tell people and stop harassing women. Leave us out of it. Flex, find a way to flex on your own. I mean, find a way to flex on your own. Anyways, y'all. There's some more coming out. So that's the video I'm going to make right now, right after this one. But I don't want this video to go too long. If you haven't been caught up on this case, check out the other videos that I've made on this case as well to kind of get caught up on that. But let me know what you think. This one was kind of an emotional one for me. When I get like that, but, but I, start, I have to enunci enunciate and pronunciate Am I, I like, I get loud. I'm like, listen, <laughs> but leave a comment below, like the video and subscribe to become a part of the IPGG squad. Okay. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think. What do you think about all this? It's crazy, but I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Bye.